Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This one's going to be a rehousing and husbandry video featuring my big girl, my Lazyodora parahibana female or salmon pig bird eater as they're amicably referred to, or even the LP. I've had this one for quite some time and she is due for a rehouse, so I figured it'd be a good time to revisit the husbandry requirements for them. They are very easy to keep species overall and they seem to become a hobby staple over the years and finding their way into a lot of people's collections. So enough of me talking, let's get into the actual rehousing. All right, this is going to be a husbandry video plus a rehousing of my large adult female Lazyodora parahibana. I get a lot of questions about these. I did a Lazyodora genus review a while back, but I didn't cover everybody individually. And I probably should have because this is one of the most popular spiders, I think, out in the pet trade. These guys are fantastic. A lot of folks end up discovering them because they find out about Theraphosa species, Theraphosa blondi, Theraphosa sturmi. They want that big giant spider, but then they read about some of the moisture requirements and the hairs and whatnot, and they decide they... Maybe you don't want one of those at the moment, but these guys are a nice substitute because they do get very large. Now, you'll read stuff out there that says that they get to be like a foot across. Can it happen? I'm guessing it can. I think there was one out there I know for a fact. I believe it was 11 and a half inches or so. But more often than not, you're looking at a spider that's going to be 8 or 9 inches. Now, do they get to be bigger than that? Yes, they do. And I finally had somebody send me confirmation and show me a picture of a molt that was an easy 10 inches. So you figure if the molt was 10 inches, the spider was probably pushing 10 and a half, 10 and three quarters, maybe even 11. So they can get big, but no, they're not going to get quite as large as the Theraphosa species, unless you get an oddball. And they don't grow quite as quickly as the Theraphosa species. They are fast growing spiders. They do put on decent size, but my Theraphosas, my Pamphibedia species tend to run laps around them as far as growth. So just something to note when you pick one of these guys up that it is going to take a little longer before you get one of those big, beefy, large spiders. Now, what I'm going to show here is Billy and I setting up the new enclosure. Obviously, before this video, we have the Lorax Plastics review where we pick up the enclosure. It's a 10 gallon, but what I did was add my own substrate mix, which is peat, cocoa, topsoil, sand, moss, and charcoal. And what I'll do is put one of those little notes, those little cards up top. So if people want to see how I mix it up, you can just follow it to that video. Then what we did is add a golden pothos or epipremnum auratium. I believe that's how you say it. I'm still learning the scientific names for the plant, so hopefully I did it justice. But these, the pothos, the golden pothos have been great. They're the one thing I have that lasts no matter what enclosure I put in, no matter how dry the conditions may get sometimes or whatnot. They do great. We have a cork bark hide. And then afterwards, we put in some leaf litter, which is oak leaf litter. So it would kind of give it a more naturalistic view uh, or appearance. So hopefully she likes that. My one concern is these guys, as you can see with this enclosure here, she's constantly digging and routing things up. And I have a funny feeling that plant's going to get torn to shreds. And that's one of the worries I always have with the bioactive enclosures, if they're going to start attacking the plants. And they will. So we'll see how that goes. So what we're going to do now is rehouse her. Now, a note about the water dish. I have not had actual water in that dish for quite some time because she kept filling up with dirt and it got nasty. But what I have over here is a cup that she has drank out of before. I will fill that up and then I can pull it out and clean it. And because because the container was getting a little bit cramped, I had to be careful when I pulled it out. But what she did the other night is she was actually out playing with it. So what we're going to do is cup her with this here and try to get her in. Now, one of the issues with these guys is the hairs are pretty nasty. At least this is one of the few species I've gotten haired by and it was not fun at all. And so heads up, the hairs are no joke. So we're going to go ahead and put this right over top of her. And then what I'm going to try to do, which is probably not going to work, is get this. Oh, I got it under cork bark. Darn it. So far, no kicky. No kicky. Nope, there's kicky. Mm. Nope, okay. All right. And you can see, oh gosh. Oh gosh. The hairs are, I don't know if you can, this is, this is going to help or hurt. Those are hairs right there. So, Billy, take a step back for a moment because the hairs are coming out. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. All right, so we just cut the little part here. The hairs are out and about, so we got to be very careful. What this is is the 10 gallon. That last one was a 5 gallon. It was obviously getting a bit too tiny for her. And we're going to slide this out so we get the back. Now we'll get it. Now, for folks that are just getting into the hobby that are watching this video, a lot of times what happens, unfortunately, is we hear about the, we, we worry about the venom, we worry about the bites. And honestly, if you're being careful, being cautious, you should not get bitten by anything. Now, 
The thing people disregard are the hairs. The hairs can be quite nasty and unpleasant. The last time I got haired by her, I scratched my eye and got some of the hairs in my eye. The corner of my eye turned blood red. It was not comfortable at all. I have allergies. My eyes itch all the time anyway, but this was particularly nasty. And I had blisters on my fingers for about two weeks from it. So the hairs are no joke. So what we're going to try to do is calm eat it. There we go. No, 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 you're, you're out. Easy. There we go. Now this is gonna go on the chair real quick. Now, I don't know, I'm gonna hold this. Actually, if you can see in the light, I don't know if it's coming out in the camera, but Billy, hold your breath. There are hairs everywhere. Check out this. Those are the hairs. Those are nasty. Those are not fun, and they're in the air. So Billy puts something over here. Corona it, coronavirus it. <clears throat> so you do not want to ingest the hairs. Obviously, they kick them quite far. They're not fun. We're going to go ahead and close this so she doesn't go wandering outside of the container like where she's going now. Now, some notes about how to keep these guys. The slings are incredibly durable. If you're starting off with a small sling, what you want to pro probably put it in is a small dram bottle or five ounce deli cup. The slings will burrow. Basically what they do is they come out, they eat, they fatten up, and then they burrow themselves. The first sling I had, I freaked out because I fed it. It buried itself completely. I was panicking, even though I had read that that was normal. And then finally came back up, it would be fatter and would repeat the cycle. They can put, also put larger slings in a 16 ounce deli cup, something around that size. Even larger slings can go in something that's around a quart. Obviously there are many sling containers out there. I'll show a couple here. But feel free to put them in something, just make sure that they can find the prey. I do keep the substrate moist as they're slings. I will say as they get older, they do not seem to care one way or another if things are moist or not. And you can see that's a, that's a big spider there. The juveniles, you can put into something that's uh, anywhere from two quarts to a, two gallons, depends on the size of the juvenile. This is one of those spiders that because of the fact it can take a little while to grow and it puts on massive size, you may find you're doing an extra rehousing. So for example, this is the fourth time I've rehoused this one where most spiders I do three. The juveniles, they will, I do give them some moist substrate. They will continue to burrow sometimes, but usually they outgrow that behavior right around they hit four inches or so. And I have had five of these guys, they've all stopped. Here we go, this is gonna be her tearing up the plant in a minute. I include a water dish. A hide, obviously give them a hide. They may still burrow, they may use the hide, although most of them right around when they hit around the three inch mark start staying out and about. And they tend to be quite bold, so you'll see them quite a bit after that size. And obviously with the adults, I started this one in a five gallon container. That's good for a smaller adult, but she obviously outgrew that quite a bit. This one here is pushing probably about eight inches, as you can see, and the 10 gallon gives her much more room, is much more less cramped than the other one. Now, feeding, they eat great. They're awesome eaters, amazing eaters. So feeding shouldn't be a problem. Slings, all my slings were taking live prey, but obviously if you have a tiny sling, you can give it pre-killed, which includes killing roaches, little tiny roaches, cutting up pieces of mealworm, or even cutting up legs off of crickets. Once they get big enough to eat, they'll take down small roaches, small crickets, no problem. I was feeding my slings twice a week. Obviously pick a feeding schedule that works for you. You don't have to feed them that often. Juveniles would easily take down medium, usually to large crickets if it's a larger juvenile, and I would drop in a couple at a time. And for this girl here, she either gets a large dubia roach or a large hisser roach, or I drop in a bunch of crickets and she will scarf them all up, web them all up and make a huge cricket burrito, which is actually a lot of fun to watch. Now, as far as pros for this species, very hardy, relatively fast growing, very readily available in the hobby. They have huge sacks. It can be a thousand to 2000 babies. So they're usually, you know, these are one of these ones that's given away as freebies sometimes. And they're also very inexpensive and they get large. So for people that are just getting into the hobby that are looking at those large spiders, this is a good one to start with. Now the cons, the hairs can be particularly bad. And I can tell you for a fact, these are one of the ones I'm pretty sensitive to. And once again, it's a positive, but it's also a negative. They are large, so people can become intimidated by them. I've had people tell me they have get one, they pick it up as an adult, it gives a threat posture, kicks some hair, and they don't want to deal with it anymore. So that's something to be aware of. And then obviously temperaments can always vary, although I've had five and they've been pretty laid back overall and only kicked during rehousings. I have talked to other people that have ones that are a little more defensive. So just know, although you may get one that is really tame, you may also get one that is a little bit more defensive. It always, it depends. And then they can d differ between molt to molt. So you can have a species that's very laid back, it molts, and it becomes defensive. 
Is it a good beginner species? It definitely can be. It might, makes most of the beginner list. It made my first beginner list. It made the beginner list where I polled keepers as to what they thought beginners should be. I just think people need to be aware of the fact that they can grow pretty quickly. They get pretty large and you're going to have a heck of a spider on your hands. So there we go. That is my Lazyodora parahybana, awesome species. One of the ones I kind of consider a hobby staple. Everybody should have one of these, and I think the majority of us have one at some point. Just big, beautiful, bold spiders. And this girl isn't even fully grown. She's got a ways to go. So hopefully we'll do updates on her in the future. The next molt should put her around eight and a half inches or so, which will be a rather large spider. Very good looking girl. Actually well behaved overall, although I'm sure we're going to be cleaning off hairs in a moment. And definitely, you know, one of those spiders, if you're looking for something big and bold, you should definitely check them out. All right, so that went really well. Now, as far as them being a good beginner species, that's going to be up for debate. I know some people will come on and say the hairs are nasty. If you get a defensive individual and it can reach 10 inches, that could be horrifying for a new keeper. But on the other side, I also think they're a good species to raise up from slings, and a lot of people have no problems with theirs whatsoever. I've raised, I think, five of them now, and they've all been fairly laid back. Obviously, this one kicked some hair, but it was because I was moving her. So I think the important part is for somebody looking into these guys, make sure you do your research, look at some other videos, read up about them and make sure it's something you're prepared for. For those of us who are prepared for them, they can make a great beginner species. For somebody who's coming into the hobby being arachnophobic and still a little scared of spiders, probably not one for you. So again, it all comes down to doing your research and being prepared. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you want to check out some more of my videos, you can check over in there. If you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. You can click that circle right up in there. Please feel free to leave a comment. I try to answer every single comment. It may take me a couple days because I get quite a few of them, but know that if you leave a comment, I'm I'm going to answer it. Hope everybody out there is staying safe. We'll catch you all next time.